Dr. Lucas Rowine from uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, and today we're going to discuss a case where we utilized uh, the VIP software in planning for total shoulder arthroplasty. This is a 64-year-old male who presents with chronic post-traumatic left shoulder pain in his non-dominant shoulder. His pain is severe, gradually worsening, and uh, rated as 9 out of 10. It's associated with stiffness and it's limited his ability to work, including driving a truck. It's failed several years of conservative treatment, including physical therapy, corticosteroid injections in the glenohumeral joint, as well as non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. These are his x-rays. So you see here a Grashi view, a scapular Y, and an axillary view, and you see advanced degenerative changes at the glenohumeral joint with posterior subluxation on the humeral head on the scapular Y view. There's bone-on-bone -bone changes confirmed on the axillary view, and importantly, there's a humeral nail from his remote trauma that is present. So his history included a humeral shaft fracture that was treated with a humeral nail, which went on to union uneventfully. In addition, he had a non-displaced coracoid base fracture of his scapula, which was treated conservatively and has been asymptomatic. You can see full-length views of the humerus here, and you can see the union side at the mid-shaft of the humerus. On physical examination, this patient on inspection had well-healed incisions with no atrophy. There was no tenderness palpation over the clavicle, the AC joint, or the coracoid process. His shoulder range of motion remains severely restricted with severe crepitus and a severely painful arc of motion on examination. His forward elevation actively was only 80 degrees, his abduction only 70 degrees actively, his external rotation at the side was only 10 degrees, and his internal rotation was also severely restricted as he could not get past his greater trochanter. His rotator cuff integrity was difficult to assess clinically, but it did appear functionally intact and there were no lag signs present. There was no glenohumeral instability and he had an otherwise normal neurovascular examination, in particular with regard to his axillary nerve function. Here we see axial cuts of the patient's glenohumeral joint and fortunately there's minimal scatter from the humeral nail. Thus we're able to still use the Arthrex VIP 3D templating system. So the recommendation was made for total shoulder arthroplasty, and there are several complex preoperative surgical considerations before undertaking this operation. Namely, does the patient have chronic supraspinatus damage from placement of his anti-grade nail done years ago? Alternatively, could you have damage to the supraspinatus or the greater tuberosity from removing this nail, which is highly likely? Should we do this in a single stage or a two-stage procedure? That is, should we take the nail out and do the total shoulder simultaneously? Or take the nail out, let it heal, and come back and do the arthroplasty at a later date? Should we consider a reverse total shoulder arthroplasty for this patient? And should we utilize 3D templating or custom plan for this patient? So for me, I elected to do a single stage operation. I planned for an anatomic total shoulder arthroplasty with a reverse total shoulder arthroplasty as a backup plan. And then we utilized 3D templating with a custom guide using the Arthrex VIP software system. So the patient is classified as having a Walsh B1 glenoid based on his retroversion. His native retroversion was 15.2 degrees, and his native inclination was 11.2 degrees, which is a positive or superior inclination. So the question becomes, how much version and how much inclination should we correct? So here we are in the VIP system. Our CT is uploaded, and you can see we have a 3D replica of this patient's exact anatomy. You can see in the corner, we can look at both coronal cuts, and in the lower corner, axial cuts with regard to where our implant is going to sit. You can also uh, make adjustments with regard to the plan in any dimension as to where you put your implant. This is where I decided in the glenoid component to sit. And you can see the 5D calibrator demonstrated here in the preoperative plan. This is an unreamed view in three dimensions of where our glenoid component and our poly will sit. So as we mentioned, his native retroversion was around 15 degrees, and in the plan I corrected this to around minus 7 degrees. With regard to his inclination, which was around 11.2 degrees of superior inclination, we corrected it down to about 7 degrees. So we're doing a mix of respecting the patient's deformity and also providing correction. This slide demonstrates both reamed and unreamed views of the patient's anatomy with our glenoid component, which is a large vault lock component in position. We did experience an intraoperative complication, which we anticipated. On removing the humeral nail, our bone quality of the greater tuberosity was compromised, 
and the supraspinatus tendon insertion was deemed to be dysfunctional. We therefore elected to change intraoperatively to a reverse total shoulder arthroplasty, which was our plan B. Does this change my three-dimensional plan? The answer is yes, it does. How does our preoperative plan change? We need to correct our inclination because with our anatomic shoulder replacement, we left around seven degrees of superior inclination. We would like to correct this down to zero or inferior inclination. So we utilize our custom guide to locate the starting point for the drill pin and we advance it ever so slightly two to three millimeters so that our starting position is not changed. We then remove the guide. Once removed, we use a freehand correction of seven to 10 degrees of inferior tilt to accommodate for our reverse base plate. As you can see, postoperatively, we've corrected that superior inclination that was originally planned when we anticipated anatomic total shoulder arthroplasty. In addition, you can see where we damaged the greater tuberosity in removing the nail and had to convert to a reverse total shoulder. I always enjoy looking at the scapular Y views on these posterior subluxated Walsh B1 and B2 glenoids because you can see significant correction in the plane of the scapula. So in summary, comprehensive preoperative planning is very important in total shoulder arthroplasty. And 3D custom templating with the Arthrex VIP system helps to avoid glenoid component malposition even if there's hardware in the proximal humerus that might cause scatter on the CT scan. So even with intraoperative conversion to a reverse total shoulder, the VIP custom plan was quite useful in correction of our retroversion and our inclination.